Eh, Maitri es, uh, recién es, es recién estrenada cat como catedrática en el departamento en inglés, o sea, la, estamos muy contentas de anunciar que le han por fin concedido el título de catedrática en el departamento en de inglés de la Universidad de Kelania. Empezó su carrera docente en 1990 en la Universidad de Peradenilla. Peraden Vale, bien. Y ha sido profesora sin invitada en diferentes uh, universidades nacionales e internacionales. En partes docencias en uh, diferentes asignaturas, entre las cuales teorías y prácticas uh, literarias críticas, en específico teoría feminista, eh, análisis crítico, poesía y ficción de mujeres, el género en la literatura, literatura de Sri Lanka contemporánea y metodología de investigación feminista. Sus investigaciones son uh, multidisciplinares, o sea que nos viene como anillo al dedo en estas jornadas, y se centran en diferentes temas, entre los cuales la poesía de las mujeres de Sri Lanka, la teoría y la metodología de investigación feminista crítica, la violencia sexual y la violencia hacia las mujeres en general, las relaciones de género en el sector privado, en organizaciones y en diferentes espacios laborales, eh, incluyendo, entre otros, los espacios de educación uh, superior, en el que... Sabemos que hay también muchas discriminaciones de género todavía. Eh, en el campo del desarrollo eh, y mujeres o desarrollo de género. Eh, como metodóloga feminista ha participado en la elaboración de estrategia y política para la incorporación de la perspectiva de género en diferentes ONGs y organizaciones de mujeres. Eh, así como en el sector privado, las universidades eh, y en la gestión de catástrofe. Forma parte del Women's Education and Resident Center y es miembro del Ethics Research Committee de la Facultad de Medicina de la Universidad de Colombo. Algunos de sus libros son, uh, son uh, From Theory to Action, Women, Gender and Development del, del año 2000, Behind Glass Selling and uh, Brick Walls Genders at the Workplace del 2006, eh, y finalmente Feminist Research Methodology, Making Meaning of uh, Meaning make Making de la 2009 que ha publicado con, uh, con Sage. Estamos además uh, particularmente contenta de que, de que esté aquí porque demasiadas veces, uh, incluso si no lo queremos, uh, tenemos la tendencia a reproducir uh, una, un, una, un contexto cultural bastante cerrado y nuestros referentes suelen ser uh, Europa, sobre todo Inglaterra, eh, Estados Unidos y como mucho Latinoamérica, aquí en España, porque claro, hay bastante contacto y por cuestiones también de lengua es fácil. Y, y por lo tanto nos, eh, nos complace de modo particular poder tener eh, también eh, la experiencia de, de una mujer como, como Maitri, porque creemos que ampliar perspectivas, especialmente teniendo en cuenta que la ciencia no solo es eh, patriarcal o heteropatriarcal, sino es, es también extremadamente occidental nuestra ciencia, y entonces creemos que podemos aprender mucho de quien uh, también proviene de otros contextos y tiene um, posibilidades de, de mirar también desde diferentes puntos de vista. Um, por esta razón creemos que nos vamos a enriquecernos mucho con esta presentación y yo creo que voy a dejar aquí a agradecerle muchísimo y dejamos directamente la palabra a Maitri. Gracias a todas también por escuchar. Uh, may I congratulate and thank SIMREF for organizing the school and Barbara in particular um, and also for focusing on data analysis, an often neglected area of feminist research methodology. Uh, allow me to thank you for inviting me to travel all the way from Sri Lanka to give this speech. It is an unanticipated honor. And I'm looking forward to the intellectual deliberations and debates of the next two days with great enthusiasm and hope to contribute and learn much from the experience about this new and exciting field of study um, that we are all in the forefront of. As feminists, I have no doubt that this would lead to long-time bonds of sisterhood and it will be a great opportunity to transcend national cultural and language boundaries. Usually when I tell people that I'm working on feminist research methodology, I provoke an array of responses. They range from a slight blankness at the idea of working on 
uh, feminism to the presumed boredom of working on methodology, from a straightforward grasp of methods to the incomprehension of obscurity. On the other hand, when Barbara and I discussed what I was going to be talking uh, at this, uh, at this uh, school on email, uh, I felt a deep resonance and so that because we were immediately on the same wavelength. Uh, since most of you are familiar with feminist research methodology, uh, in this instance I may not face the same challenges as before, but I think I would also ne need to keep you interested and stimulated during the next hour or so. Then that is quite a challenge. One objective of my speech today will be to provide an overview of arguments for adopting feminist research methodology in researching. However, it is not possible to do so without also considering the question, what is feminist research methodology? Is it simply a straightforward question of research methods? Or does feminist research methodology refer to analysis? Or is it an issue of theory and practice relating to the political aspirations and ethical safeguards of research? Or perhaps feminist research methodology today become a speciality, a new branch of learning and perhaps even a discipline? Um, let me go to my objectives, Mother. Um, okay, thanks. There is no doubt that over the years, feminist research methodology has been extensively defined, comprehensively demarcated, hotly debated, and vigorously redefined in global academia. And the following, in the following sections, I, tried to, I, I will strive to give you an overview of feminist research methodology. My second objective in the paper is to consider some of the challenges to dominant epistemological assumptions of feminist research methodology, particularly by non-Western feminists and especially South Asians. So we need to then consider the following questions. What are some of the common histories and experiences, feminist understandings and objectives assumed by us when doing feminist research? What are some of the differences? How can these dominant methodological issues of feminism be conceptualized and understood? Admittedly, now these are very broad, generalized questions, and it's quite understandably quite a challenge given the assumptions implicit in separating the local from the global, the Western from the non-Western, uh, and method other methodologies or for that matter, in distinguishing transitional from developed nations, or in considering both the possibilities of differences and conflicts, as well as the commonalities and unities within regions. Thank you, Barbara. So to begin with, I have identified and conceptualized some of the dominant strands of feminist research methodology according to the following categories or frames, despite a kind of a postmodern aversion towards classifications. This is because they continue to be thematically uh, of interest for feminist researchers, for methodologists, for epistemologists, and theorists. They relate to, firstly, discussions about the ways in which the subjectivity of the feminist researcher engages and interacts with the research process. Um, then, feminist considerations of the unstable and often conflated multiple realities of life and researching, in other words, ontology. Assumptions, understandings, and justifications by feminists about knowledge, uh, epistemology, Feminist methods that are applied to collect, construct, analyze, deconstruct data on the topic. Feminist theorizations applied or made that generalize, specify, or deconstruct feminist uh, research interests. And finally, 
feminist ethical and political inferences about the research process, including the methods employed. Um, so, feminist subjectivities. Uh, if I may begin by defining subjectivity. Um, subjectivity refers to the consciousness of the internal self in terms of thoughts, emotions, experiences, beliefs, assumptions, intentions, the imagination, and consciousness of the self and others, as well as external identities imposed by society. Consequently, it is not incorrect to state that feminism begins with a consciousness in women, a consciousness of women's subjectivities as individual women and as uh, women as a collective, in other words, of women becoming conscious of themselves as women. And why is subjectivity important to feminist research methodology? Because at the core of feminist research methodology is the political consciousness of the self as a woman, in the early days as a victimized woman, uh, woman and then later as an agent of resistance or a subject of self-determination. Now, I think, Barbara, you went into that a little bit in your talk about the idea of the politics of feminist research methodology. Um, so at the very foundational level then, feminist subjectivities can be conceptualized in two ways. First, as the consciousness of the self as a constituent member of women as a collective, and second, as the awareness of the self as a biological, gendered woman, in other words, as an individual. Because often the concept of women in the plural was a politicized category in feminist discourses used for aspirational objectives in research, irrespective of the differences between and amongst groups of women. However, the discursive representation of women as an illusory mass was soon critiqued as being simplistic and essentialist. For example, as Nigerian feminist Oye Wumi points out, there was no pre-existing group of women characterized by shared interests, desires, or social position in Yoruba land before its encounter with the West. Furthermore, not all societies make the distinction between men and women their primary form of social ordering. Social ordering could, for instance, take place according to age hierarchies. Nonetheless, the homogeneous overarching perception of women as women served to institute women not only as a category of analysis, but also as a subject position when it comes to feminist research methodology. Similarly, the concept of a, the woman or a woman in the singular is also a core assumption in feminist research methodology because of the gaps, the anomalies, the stereotypes and misrepresentations in many existing conceptualization of the woman in the singular. In this context, the woman is firstly considered as a biological entity essentially based on sight. And secondly, as a social construction, as pointed out by Simone Dubois and others, and the consciousness of subjectivity as a woman in relation to a physical body has been extensively theorized. For instance, a corporeal feminists have identified the biological differences between the man and the woman as a central cause for male control of women. For feminists like uh, Firestone, Reproduction in particular was a bodily site of inequality in the woman along with sexuality and sexual orientation. On the other hand, difference feminists have affirmed, valorized, and also celebrated bodily differences as a source of power. Helen C. Sue talks of an écriture feminine or feminine writing which is symbolic of the woman's body. And Carol Gilligan uh, argues for the woman's unique moral development as opposed to the man. These understandings of subjectivity, and let's not forget that subjectivity is also part and parcel of ontology, 
were founded on the idea of sexual differences as natural and as permanent. They have therefore resulted in oppositional, static, stereotyped representations of the woman. Another highly influential view of subjectivity as a woman was founded on the idea of gender as a social and cultural division by writers like Anne Oakley. Thus, uh, sex role feminists underrated the biological and argued that gender divisions were therefore artificial and changeable. They theorized that socialized procession processes were uh, the sources of gender inequalities and that transformations in social structures and processes could therefore lead to gender equity and equality. But um, paradoxically, it is possible that even social constructionist arguments of gender may have served to render woman and man as passive objects. This is because of very rigid conceptualizations of structural and ideological forces of social conditioning that could compromise any ideas of personal agency. In response to these assumptions of a woman's subject subjectivity as static or accomplished or as achieved, feminists like Judith Butler have theorized of gender as performativity, thereby focusing on the identity politics of subjectivity. She's, uh, Butler particularly saw sex and gender as a continuous process that was being constantly constructed and sustained by individuals through repetitions, rituals, and performances. It is possible then to see that a significant volume of ontological representations and constructions of the woman in research relies on both social constructivism and biological determinism. These unify centuries-old ontological assumptions made by Plato to Descartes to beyond in Western philosophy offer mind and body bifurcation. Feeling these debates further are completely different ontological perspectives on subjectivity, which argue that the concept of biology itself is arbitrary and socially constructed. In other words, that things that are seen as natural and predetermined, such as biological differences, are merely conceptualized as such and classified as such. In this understanding, both sex and gender differences are seen as social con constructs and therefore partial to change. Underlying these conceptualizations of the woman is a supposition often based on notions of homosexuality, as argued by Adrian Risch, and of the woman's relationship to the man, generally as the binary opposite. As we all know, this assumption reinforces heterosexuality as a norm, as opposed to other sexual orientations, despite the historical, social, cultural, and discursive production of the variation in sexualities. In response, lesbian feminists have advocated the abandonment of heter uh, compulsory heterosexuality. Feminists like Riesch have conceptualized a lesbian continuum by including all women-centered experiences of women devoid of a sexual focus. While the politics of sexuality was seen as key to gendered politicized subject positions, there were also other intersections in subjectivity that have become key to feminist research methodology. Standpoint theory has argued out the significance of subjectivities located in class, race, ethnicity, indigenous groups, castes, language, geography, age, transgender, disability, the non-Western, post-colonialism, and nationalism. Here, an understanding of Homi Baba's hybridity is useful in engaging not only with the pluralisms of subjectivities, 
but also the cross cuts and intersections, overlaps and simultaneity, the fragments, arbitrariness, and continuing evolution of feminist subjectivities. By and large, the above possibilities also convey the extent to which subjectivity is situated in multiple and often contradictory fields of power. For the main part, despite their abstractness, the discursive concepts of women and women have been partially successful in promoting concrete, historically located, social, psychological, and cultural understandings of the experiences of being women, woman, which is a fundamental aspect of feminist research methodology. Uh, yet it must be noted that I have conceptualized feminist subjectivities as a specific category for the purpose of this speech. Feminist subjectivities can be equally conceptualized as facets of ontology and epistemology or as feminist theory, as being part of ethics and politics and as a method of analysis. Uh, at another level, let me talk about feminist ontologies. Um, feminists um, have engaged, uh, feminist research methodology involves considerations of the unstable and often conflated multiple realities of life. Ontology, in other words. Ontology refers to consciousness of the realities of the self and understandings of the forms, nature, or aspects of reality which impinge on are part of or motivate research processes. Feminists have engaged with ontology because of their recognition of the relative absence of women in most versions of realities. Rampant androcentrism, even when or where women have, were present, unconscious assumptions of the male as the norm, the dominance of male perspectives and bias, and of pervasive sexism in new, numerous knowledge domains and accounts. This understanding led to filling gaps vis-a-vis -vis women, a highly compensatory political act of co correcting epistemological absences or silences and deficiencies or misrepresentations in the sciences social sciences, history, development, arts, literature, culture, and family. Yet throughout history, feminists have given evidence of feminist observations and constructions of realities from time to time. In the 1970s, such a focus on women gained momentum in African, Asian, and South American countries with the global intervention of the United Nations and local initiatives by women. These led to reports on the status of women, as well as other seminar studies, especially on development issues. They span women's education, economic contribution, uh, political participation, health, legislation, agriculture, and households, as well as country-specific issues. Though less keen to attribute blame for the condition and oppression of women than their Western counterparts, they nevertheless presented panoramic views of women's situations in various fields of activity. From a methodological perspective, these were political attempts to promote the women's side of the coin and thereby reverse the male as the norm and androcentric perceptions of life. Alongside these ontologies of this, what I call the situation of women are ontologies of causality. Usually these were conceptualized as monocauses of women's oppression, um, such as patriarchy, reproduction, male violence, the male psyche, unpaid labor, compulsory heterosexuality, and so on. Aside from which, 
historical research mapped women's oppression as spanning centuries of civilization and assumed common overarching narratives of women's oppression. In contrast, postmodern culturalist and postcolonial approaches established experiential ontologies that argued for the specificities of women's experiences due to specificities of national context, cultural context, and subjective context. I'd like to uh, illustrate by giving a list of examples. Take the examples of the historical dual subjugation of black women in the USA and UK, or the imperialist post-colonial realities of denial and oppression in neo-colonial states of India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Nigeria, Kenya, and so on or the marginalization of indigenous women in countries like the USA, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, etc. Take feminist engagements with the nation state as a result of space state, uh, sorry, state-sponsored nationalisms, communalisms, and religious fundamentalisms, generally at the expense of women. Take the periodic militarization and war situations of the latter half of the 20th century in countries like Bosnia, Pakistan, India, Ireland, Israel, South Africa, and Sri Lanka that have long drawn repercussions of women as victims and agents. Take feminist concerns of neoliberalizations, globalizations, development, and displacements, as well as migration and diaspora, especially in urban cities of the West, or take the dominant subjectivity-based realities of the West that revolve around the politics relating to the body or being, such as lesbianism, transgendering, abortion, weight issues, pornography, disability, and illness. Feminist research methodology can also be seen as founded on ontologies of change especially in transitional countries. Understandings of women vis-a-vis -vis the development of nations hold a key position, especially in relation to the epistemologies of women in development, WID, and gender and development, GAD, methodologies. But by the 1980s, WID's assumption about adding women in were exposed as women became compartmentalized, marginalized, and manipulated by patriarchal exigencies and development stereotypes. So the aspirational myths, uh, in addition, the aspirational myths of gender equality and equity pertaining to the economic empowerment and political participation of women from the 1970s onwards that drove research came under ju judicious critique in the 2000s, especially in the face of religious fundamentalisms and when co-opted by neoliberal forces, as was the case in India. The instrumentalization of gender through the development of methodological tools for gender mainstreaming, measurement and evaluation has had mixed results. Uh, especially within institutions. It has highlighted the processes of implementation at the expense of outcomes while granting limited consciousness within institutional spheres. Revisualization of realities according to alternative ontologies are also part of feminist projects of change. Early work which included women-centered domestic formations and lifestyles in imaginary women's communities, as envisaged by Aubach, for example, was important to, uh, for lesbian and separatist feminism. Other imaginaries were diverse, and span from the late Sarah Radic's visualization of the pos possibilities of maternal peace politics to Vandana Shiva's reevaluation of the discipline of biology from the intersecting standpoints of feminism, from uh, ecology, and the third world. 
these transformative elements in ontologies are based largely on faith in the human capacity for change, assumptions about feminist agency, and understandings of cause and effect. In contrast, postmodern conceptualizations of realities focused on uh, anti-foundations, on fragmentations, on pragmatisms, on instabilities, localizations, and insecurities. These, of course, thwarted the certainty, the consistency, the stability, and the foundationality of master narratives of women's oppression. A foundational co concept such as gender relations, for example, was no longer a universal or homogeneous category under postmodernist interest. Rather, it became relational and context bound. And take the concept of the woman. This was too was no longer a unitary category in conceptualizing change, but a unifying one for purposes of strategic essentialism. While women's alliances and solidarity were re-theorized in terms of politics of identification instead of a politics of identity by feminists like Teresita de Laurentiis, Avtar Brach, and Mary Menard. Given the diversity composed and surfaced by feminisms globally, and despite the political threats posed to feminisms through the undermining of a fundamental cause or a grand narrative of women's subordination worldwide by postmodernisms, feminists have found it expedient to incorporate postmodern visualizations in their understandings of ontologies. This is because postmodern perspectives can provide alternative understandings of feminist controversies and prevent tendencies towards oversimplification, essentialism, homogenizing, and stereotyping. Thus, uh, irrespective of whether these are modernist or postmodernist conceptualizations, feminist ontology is fundamental to feminist research methodology. When these conceptualizations of realities get transformed into theorizations or analytical frameworks or justifications of knowledge or validation of research, they then become epistemology, which is what I would like to look at next. <clears throat> 